Richard Hammond is in a critical condition tonight at Leeds Royal Infirmary. He was seriously injured in a crash while filming a new edition of Top Gear. Four years ago, I crashed at nearly 300 miles an hour. It was nasty. I damaged my brain. But in fact, I was very, very lucky. Because in an accident such as mine, you would expect me to have damaged not just here, but here, the spinal cord. It's all part of the same system. And all too often, for people who've been involved in major accidents and have damaged the spinal cord. That damage is permanent. And for them, life is never the same again. Last year, Times columnist Melanie Reed had a horse riding accident that changed her life forever. I was doing cross country training with my horse. He did a sudden refusal uh, over a small jump and I went over his neck and my face planted in the ground and my body kind of crunched over on top of me. I knew immediately something catastrophic had happened and I reached down with my right hand and I, I couldn't feel my body, I couldn't feel my legs, my legs wouldn't move. Melanie was airlifted to hospital where doctors delivered the devastating news that she might never walk again. Your life, as you know, it ends and you are you're dependent on everybody to feed you, to do your bowels, to move you in bed, and you enter a period of what can only, I can only describe it sort of mental and physical torture. Yeah, could you swing my legs over for me? Okay. Thanks. 10 months later, Melanie's still in hospital, trying to come to terms with her condition. Oh, they're better on the floor, actually. I think if I hadn't had a family, I, I don't know what I'd have done. You try and not cry when they're there. You try and be brave and cheerful. Um, but inside, you're sort of screaming, you know, stay with me, don't go. But, but they have to go. You know, they, they, they can't stay the night. And that's, that's the hard bit. The loneliness of, of dealing with it by yourself when your family aren't there. Every year, more than 800 people of all ages are paralysed following an injury to their spinal cord. Yet research into the condition is desperately underfunded. That's why I'm appealing to you on behalf of Spinal Research, a charity that needs your help to better treat paralysis and ultimately find a cure. When Dan was a toddler, he was just never still. He had so much energy. Literally had to pin him down to, to get him to bed. Dan was just four years old when on a family holiday in Greece, he was paralyzed in a car accident. He asked me why he couldn't move his arms and legs. So I had to tell him that he'd had an accident, that he'd got an injury in the back of his neck. And then he asked me when it would get better. And I had to tell him that it wouldn't. Dan's spinal injury was so severe he couldn't breathe unaided and was put on a ventilator indefinitely. Nine years later, he still needs 24-hour care. Dan is totally dependent on me and everybody else that cares for him, because he can't do anything for himself. Giving Ash is a good clean, mate. I have to brush his teeth, wash his face, put his clothes on, change him. And to be in that situation, it, it, well, it's unimaginable, unless you're there. 30 years ago, when the charity first started, it was thought that the spinal cord couldn't be repaired, that paralysis was permanent and must be endured. But now, thanks in part to work funded by Spinal Research, there is hope. Here at the Spinal Injuries Unit in Glasgow, 
The charity is studying the benefits of a robotic treadmill that's helping patients with some feeling in their limbs to improve their mobility. Melanie's been using the device twice a week for the last two months. I don't have much sensation in my legs, but I can feel some of the muscles working internally. And a decision was made to try me on a machine called the Locomat. By understanding how the body responds to rehabilitation, the charity hopes to develop further treatments for patients who have some sensation following a spinal cord injury. I'm just going to turn up the speed a little bit. The locomat has been fantastic for me. It's given me the ability to walk a few steps on a walking machine. It's helped, I think, train my brain and it's helped me lift my hips and my knees forward in a way that I couldn't previously do. You know, it's a big achievement. Big, big achievement. <laughs> How did you think I did? I think you did really well because we managed to increase the speed pretty quickly and we also managed to increase the amount of weight you were taking, so that was good. Spinal research is making significant progress into understanding spinal cord injury and how, for many people, rehabilitation can help. But it's their work in the laboratory that's proving to be the most promising yet. For the very first time, researchers have identified a number of key treatments with the potential to prevent or even reverse paralysis in even the most severe cases of spinal cord injury. Professor Sue Barnett is researching just one of the treatments that could help transform the lives of thousands of paralysed people. I, I really believe that trying to identify stem cell therapy as a treatment for spinal cord injury is really important. What we'd ideally like to do is to take healthy cells from a patient, transplant them back into the spinal cord with the aim to restore function in the paralysed patient. Okay. But the charity needs your help to continue this vital research and give hope to people like Dan. If spinal research could help him move one arm, it would change his life dramatically. If he didn't depend on the ventilator to, to breathe, it would take out the life and death situation of his condition. So I'm just hoping and praying one day that it will happen, it will be real. Help make paralysis a thing of the past. Please donate by calling 01483 898 786 or you can visit the website spinal-research.org. Or if you'd like to post a donation, please make your cheque payable to Spinal Research and send it to Bramley Business Centre, Guildford, GU50AZ. Remember, if you're a UK taxpayer, the charity can collect gift aid on your donation, worth another 28%. Just send in a note to say you want your donation to be subject to gift aid and include your address. Thank you.